The Los Angeles Rams coming off a big win against the Giants last week. Take on the New Orleans Saints who are 2-0 for the first time ever. Hello again, everybody. I'm Skip Carey along with Pat Hayden. We welcome you to the Superdome and what should be a heck of a game. The last three times these teams played, Pat, the game was decided on the final play. Could happen again. Yeah, I really expect this to be a close game, and it's in, in part with what went on today in the NFL. Six close games today in the NFL, including that, that giant Chicago Bear game. This is a game that's going to be decided by defense, special teams, field position, maybe one of the kickers kicking a winning field goal the last couple of minutes. That's the kind of game to expect. The Rams have a new look both on the field and off the field, don't they? Well, you know, the hired uh, Jeff Fisher, new defensive coordinator, only 33 year, years old as Jeff Fisher, came from the Philadelphia Eagles where he served as Buddy Ryan's defensive coordinator. But it's not just the person, not just the change of him but it's a change of attitude a philosophy to come after you in your face kind of defense i talked to a lot of the ram defenders this week they are excited about playing this aggressive style of defense and it's worked well for them with their two weeks anyway a man from missouri during the time job in their backfield along with a terrific quarterback i knew you were going to mention missouri yeah. party yeah robert del pino from missouri he he's having a breakthrough year he you know came in four years ago for the rams was a special teams player his first year last year he was more of a third down back but he said last night to be i want to be an every down back and that's what John Robinson is hoping from him. Now, for Jim Everett, he's hoping for some passing games like he's had against the Saints. He's had eight games against the Saints, thrown for over 2,000 yards. It's tough to run in this New Orleans defense, so Everett is going to have to go up top, I think, to put for Anderson. You know, you mentioned the New Orleans defense, and you know better than I, they've got four terrific linebackers, don't they? I think the best collection, four linebackers in the entire NFL. Now, they play well together, but I think what makes them special is they complement one another. Swilling and Jackson on the outside can rush the passer. Vaughn Johnson and Sam Mills can stuff the run. you got to block the outside guys in the pass and figure out a way to block the inside guys in the run. Interesting story, too. The saga of Bobby Bear, who, of course, didn't play last year. How will the fans treat him tonight, do you think? Well, we talked to him yesterday. Bobby Bear, local kid, grew up here in Louisiana, went to college here. He's expect, expecting to be booed, and all quarterbacks go through that. But there's no doubt in my mind the New Orleans Saints are a much better football team with Bobby Bear at quarterback. And, Skip, I was amazed in week one after a year's layoff, he comes back and fourth and ten and throws the winning touchdown pass against Seattle. But they are a much better team, I think, with him at quarterback. And we're ready to go. John Robinson looks on. His team will kick it off. Tony Zendejas will kick it away. And Jim Mora's team will receive. And the deep men are Bobby Morris and Quinn Early. Morris wears number 35, Early number 89. So we're ready to go from the Superdome, and we sincerely hope you'll enjoy it on TNT. to still control the ball. We said, it, we said it was going to be a game of defense, special teams, and field position, and you're seeing it on the very on the opening kickoff. The big hit there by Sanders, number 55 for the Rams. Is he is uh, on the ground, as they call down by contact, and give it to the New Orleans Saints. Craig Hayward is not in the lineup as we get going here, and Eric Martin flanks wide to the right with early wide left. Dalton Hilliard, the lone running back. A bad the quarterback. Hilliard, nothing, nothing at all. May have lost the yard. This is an offense that hasn't run the ball real well, quite honestly. Quinn Early is their deep threat. He came on plan B from San Diego, but they're hoping Dalton Hilliard can be the everyday back. Offensive line, best player, Stan Brock at right tackle, but this is a, a line that's injured. Brad Leggett gets the start for Joel Hilgenberg, who has a bad ankle. Again, Martin to the right. Now Hayward has checked into the lineup with Hilliard. Larry Carroll made the stop on that first play from scrimmage, by the way. Hayward in motion. Looks for his tight end complete. That's got to be interference. Hobie Brenner, the intended receiver. I see no flag, however. Well, that, got, that has to be interference on Michael Stewart. Take a look at the defensive lineup for the Rams. Again, we talked about their aggressive style. Robert Young, the rookie, fifth-round draft pick, filling in for Alvin Wright. But Kevin Green is the premier pass rusher for the Rams. 
Third, third and ten from the 19-yard line. Possession play. Gil Fennerty comes in. He's a third down specialist for New Orleans. Out of the shotgun. A bit. yesterday number 89 is he is a blessing because they didn't have a receiver who could do this last year a perfect compliment to Eric Martin their possession receiver on the other side a guy who can catch the ball and then do something with it afterward it can make a 10 yard gain into 40 yards as he did there 37 to be precise wide to the left is Floyd Turner oh, so technical in this distance well that's he fights for it. Loose football. It's on the deck. And again, it looks like New Orleans came up with the ball. Hilliard got it back. Mike Peel was the guy who hit him first. Yeah, Mike Peel, number 95. And I think it was Carl Wilson, number 77 for the Rams. There's Peel, number 95. He is a productive defensive tackle. Not a guy that's going to you know, do television commercials and do a lot of interviews after the game. But when you watch the film on Monday, you see how many tackles Mike Peel had made. He keeps people off linebackers. A steady inside defensive tackle. Anthony Newman checks in as a nickelback for the Rams. On second and long. Lillian Turner in motion. A bear to put it up. Larry Kell made the stop. One of the keys tonight will be Stan Brock, number 67, blocking Kevin Green, number 91. That time, Brock does a nice job of just pushing the ball outside, or pushing the blocker, Kevin Green, outside. And with a quick rhythm passing game that Bobby Aver is specializes in, you're not going to sack him that way. But a good block by Brock. Early wide right. Hilliard, the running back, splits wide left. First down at the 31 for the Saints. And with the throw. Too tall, intended for Hilliard. Cover by Daryl Henley, but the pass was just a little wide. I think you, you forget how good a player Dalton Hilliard has been in his career. 1989, two years ago, rushed for over 1,200 yards caught 52 passes then a year ago injured out for 10 games with a knee injury he re-injured that same knee although a different kind of injury in the Miami preseason game but they need him to be an every down back and if he doesn't get healthy you heard Kevin Kiley on the pregame show they're looking and talking about trading for Bobby Humphrey or a number of other teams second and ten Gets it away. Diving catch at the 10-yard line. Eric Martin. That's 60 straight games for him. 21 yards. And how about Bobby Abear hanging in there under pressure? This he gets an inside game by Kevin Green, number uh, 91, who gets uh, really held by Jim Dombrowski, quite honestly. And then downfield, number 84, Eric Martin, who knows how to run routes. Again, I think that's a pass interference for the second time on the Rams that hasn't been called. First and goal, 10 yard line. They overload to the left side to the Saints. Second goal is intended for, if anyone, John Tice, one of their tight ends. You know, Jim Mora you know, gives you that look. He looks like he watches PBS and knows what kind of wine to order with fish. But it, inside, there is a guy that is, he is determined. He is a tight coach, but he was saying this week that I think we're a much better team with Bobby A. Bear at quarterback. You all right? I'm fine. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> Second and goal. Hayward. Haven't been for a long time. And Hilliard. Hayward in motion. Into the end zone almost. And 
intercepted. It was broken up by Michael Stewart. Yeah, nice play that time by Michael Stewart, number 23. Here's a guy, their strong safety, who plays very well close to the line of scrimmage. Not quite as, as good downfield, but that time does a great job of, of, of staying right around Eric Martin. And then when he saw Martin's head turn, Stewart turns, and the ball hits him right in the hip. Gil Fennerty checks into the backfield for the Saints. All these yards have come in the air for the Saints on this ground. You have to take the inside away. He didn't. Early makes a nice reception on a well-thrown ball by Abair. And they're going to go for it here. Listen to this play. Fourth and a foot. opening drive here by the Saints because you saw a little bit of everything. They got the ball both to their wide receivers outside and when they had to get it on fourth and one, they give it to their, their go-to back. And every team has one. Dalton Hilliard is that guy for New Orleans. Tommy Barnhart will hold. Martin Anderson kicks. Not too surprising. Let's look at it again one more time as Dalton Hilliard gets it in. 11 plays, 81 yards. It took 507. Dalton Hilliard can break some tackles when he has to. He can get to the corner of the end zone just like he did right here. Anderson will kick it off. The deep men for the Rams. Number 82, Vernon Turner. Number 38, David Lang. Big crowd here. They say not capacity, but boy, they didn't miss by much. Long drive by the Saints, and they did it in the air. First rushing touchdown by Dalton Hilliard since 1989, and the first rushing touchdown for the Saints this season. Boy, he was some kicker, isn't he? Turner will dump it, and they'll start at the 20-yard line. And that's a significant kick. Over half the time, Anderson puts the ball into the end zone, and you have to go 80 yards. And, you know, your defense has just given up a touchdown. You're feeling a little bit down. And then your kicker comes in, the special teams come in, and puts in the end zone and makes you go 80. Jim Everett, 32 out of 51, 373 yards, no touchdowns in the first yeah, you know, couple games, two interceptions. Only through the 16 passes last week against the Giants. Clearly he's going to have to throw the ball more tonight because you can't run consistently against this New Orleans defense. Anderson wide right, Everett to the left. Delfino loses two. Sam Mills on the stop. Robert Delfino off of a 100-yard game against the Giants last week. They're hoping that he can be the go-to guy, the every-down back for the Rams this season. Sam Mills is probably tired of people saying he's only 5'9", but he is, and he plays like he's 6'4". You know, he's going to be playing against that offensive line. Real question mark there at tackles. Gerald Perry gets his first start at left tackle. And Robert Jenkins at right tackle for Jackie Slater, a man who played there since 75 but injured with shoulder last week. among those and on the stop. This is a very good New Orleans defense, and it starts in their defensive line. Frank Warren, a year 
back after a suspension last year on a, a drug situation, but he is playing well. The best four linebackers, they complement one another extremely well, and they cover up a lot of mistakes. Gene Atkins, the free safety, is the real strength in the secondary. Third and seven. Aaron Cox is in the game. An extra wide receiver comes wide right with Anderson. Miller to the left. and the Rams are going to go three and out. If you're going to get rid of this ball, you better do it quickly. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of people coming from behind, putting pressure on the quarterback. But a terrific play there by Vince Buck because that ball was well thrown, caught just for a second, and then Vic, uh, Buck tips it out of the way. Buck is the deep man, and Dale Hatcher will be trying to punt it in his direction. He gets it away. A high kick, fair catch called for and made at the 32-yard line, and that's where the Saints will set up shop this time. A 45-yard punt, no return for New Orleans. Saints 7 nothing. We'll be back. Think of the last five seasons in the National Football League. The surprising thing, I was actually surprised, Skip, when I saw this. You, you think of the 49ers and the Giants and Bears, obviously, and maybe the Skins, but... Really surprised how well the, the Saints have been the last five years. You know, they've gotten in the playoffs last year with an 8-8 eight eight record, and Jim Moore is hoping this can kind of be a breakthrough year with what's going on with the 49ers. I think the division is wide open. The 49ers have come back to the pack, quite honestly. He wins tonight to go 3-0. and It could be an interesting division race. Three tight ends in the game for the Saints. Dalton Hilliard, the running back. Threw it behind Brenner. He couldn't swing around in time to make the play. Brent Farinaez was on the cover. And when you run the ball as well as the Saints have historically, but they have not run it well this year, you ought to have your tight end wide open on play-action passes. But, you know, surprisingly, a, a defense looks at the Saints and they say, well, they're only averaging 50-some-odd yards rushing this year. Why go after the play-action fake? But it's just instinct, and your tight end's going to be open. Second down, 10 yards to go. Eight minutes left in the first quarter. Hayward gets the carry and bangs out to the 35-yard line. That's the fourth run for the Saints. They've thrown the ball nine times. Farinay's again made the stop. He's a good linebacker. Craig Hayward goes about 280, the size of several small states. Is Craig? They don't call him Ironhead anymore? Well, they do call him Ironhead as well. And, Not you know, to his face, I bet. No, absolutely. Always behind his back. But interesting fullback in that what he does very well is block outside linebackers. At 280 pounds, remember those outside linebackers, the best athletes in the league. But he is very good at blocking outside linebackers. Once again, Gil Fennerty enters the game in the backfield. Shot done for Hebert on third and seven. Got to get close to the 43-yard line. Turner and Murphy. Great reception by Turner, but I think he's going to be shy of the first down. Yeah, absolutely. Sammy Lilly and Michael Stewart on the stop. Good play by the Rams. And so the ball will go back to Los Angeles. That's one of those those uh, things tomorrow when the Saints look at their, their films. You're going to talk to Floyd Turner about eight yards. You don't run the route at six. Darrell Henley, a defensive back, the deep man for the Rams, stands at his 20. Tommy Barnhart. They'll kick it away. Oh, what a kick. Mm. Flags fly. Henley at the seven at the thirteen yard line gets to the play, and that's it. Let's check the flag, however. Benny Thompson made the good hit. The Rams are saying it's against New Orleans. So we may have this to do all over again. Let's wait well, and see. Tom Dooley is our referee. 
could possibly be a first. Uh, no, it's against the Rams. You're right. That's once this year. That's correct. <laughs> exactly. Still gloating about those Atlanta Braves, aren't you? What? What did they do today? <laughs> Braves will be on CBS on Tuesday night, by the way, from San Francisco. And then we'll be in your town Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We have an IBW illegal block. Number 26 on the receiving team. And penalties declined. We have a personal foul. Number 23 on the receiving team. Blocking below the waist. Post possession foul. Time out. So the Rams were wrong. Yeah, here's the foul right here. You see the hook? The hold? Clearly a hold. I mean, that's, that's about as flagrant as you can get. And, and the, then a block, they yeah. say, below the waist. So the Rams are back, way back to the seven-yard line. We'll be back. Here we go. The Rams start from the seven-yard line. The Saints haven't allowed a run longer than ten yards this year. Del Pino to set back. Somebody moved too soon. Yeah, that's crowd noise right there. Looks like may have been Gerald Perry. Yeah, and that's what happens when you have Pat Swilling lined up to your outside. And you know you have to pass block against Pat Swilling. Half the distance on the penalty. One of the problems the Rams have had early in the year is the exchange between Tom Newberry, the center, and Jim Everett, the quarterback. Fumbled once in game one. In game two, they had an exchange with a guard. Brock did hit the ball at an Everett chance. They were concerned about that as well. Well, Anderson wide to the right. It's complete for the tight end, short of the 10-yard line, down at about the 8 is Pat Carter, the four-year man out of FSU. It was Damone Johnson, the, their uh, starting tight end, I believe. My mistake. Yep. That's, that's all right. But Damone is a, is a tight end for the Rams, a, a guy that they tried to replace over a number of years, but they can't seem to find somebody to beat him out. And then they realize when they settle into the season that he does a pretty doggone good job for them, particularly blocking. Anderson again wide right, Ellard wide left. You wonder when they're going to let one rip. Running back breaks out of there and close to the first down. Delpino again. Brett Maxey, safety on the stop. There's an, always an adage that you run at a pat, pass rusher. 56 for the Saints is Pat Swilling. And that's what the Rams are doing is running right at him. The guard, Vern Brostick, picked him up. And the fullback, Buford McGee, threw a good block on the defensive end. But you put a big body on Pat Swilling. And the Rams will have three different blocking schemes tonight for that man right there. They got the first down at the 18-yard line. Delfino in motion. Everett has pressure. Complete to the 20-yard line. A gain of only about two yards. Boy, if Pat Swilling got held there, I think. Remember a couple of weeks ago in the Monday night game, uh, Lawrence Taylor getting held all the time? See the jersey? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a hold. Same thing happened to LT. Actually, it was worse than the giant Monday night game against the 49ers. But, again, that's the concern you have with Pat Swilling. You don't want to get into a situation where you're throwing the ball every down. Because he's going to come after and sooner or later he's going to get there. Second and about six for the Rams. Delpino, nothing there. Down he goes. Ricky Jackson was among those on the stop. And Frank Warren, too, number 73 for the New Orleans Saints. Talked about him being suspended all last year, 1990, for a drug situation. But before the suspension, 1989, this guy, Frank Warren, could really play the pass, rush the passer, but he was also could stuff the run. That tremendous speed. The coaches were, were saying that, hey, this guy can outrun some of our linebackers. Reggie Jones and Betsy Glenn come in. A couple of extra defensive backs for New Orleans. Third and six from the 22. Important down for Jim Everett here to get this crowd out of it. Flag, fly. Everett has oh. a man. It's intercepted. It might have been, might have 
been against New Orleans. Let's wait and see. Well, he had Aaron Cox wide open down the middle. It is going to be against New Orleans from the reaction of the players, and it is. That's a huge, huge play in this yep. game. Offside, 56 defense, third down. Yeah, that, that's going to happen. But time every once in a while with a with a uh, with a pass rusher, 56, top of the screen, trying to get the jump on Gerald Perry, number 64. Yeah, the right foot is across the uh, the neutral zone. A good call, save the uh, save the interception by Jim Everett. And now makes it instead of a third and six, a third and one as they do it again. That may change the way the Rams attack. Yeah. This situation with three minutes left in the corner. And that's what John Robinson, I think, wants with this offensive team from third and one, third and two, not third and eight. Want to, want to give you a chance to, to grind out a couple of first downs in a place like this. Everett has called a timeout here and heads to the bench to visit with Robinson and the rest of his staff. 7 nothing is our score. 250 left in the first quarter. Third and one for the Rams. We'll see what they do. And years, they would run right over Jackie Slater, the right tackle, number 78, who's been there since 1976, was injured. So Joe Malinichik, number 71, the right guard, and Tom Newberry, the center, number 66. That's where they feel they have the best run blockers, right in the center of the guard and the center of the offense. Line. They split their wide receiver. He's going to throw for it. Incomplete. Intended for Del Pino. You see the coverage by number 56, Pat Swilling? He's a good one. Yeah, he, he's an every-down player. And it also shows you the respect the Rams have for this New Orleans team. You don't, it's hard to pick up first downs running the football. Swilling can rush the passer, and he can play some pass defense as well. And it was a good angle. It looked like Del Pino was wide open, but Swilling had a tough angle for Everett to throw around. Dale Hatcher will kick it away. Vince Buck will try to return it. Just missed the block. Buck's got some room. Not anymore, he doesn't. He loses about six yards back to the 27. Sammy Lilly among those on the coverage. 42-yard kick. You know, pretty good rush there. We said this is going to be special teams game, defense, field position. Obviously coming after Hatcher right there, but the interesting thing to note, I think the Rams two uh, two series, once they were on the 20, and once they were on the 7, and when they punt the ball back, New Orleans gets it on the, what, the 29-yard line. So, really, it, it, the game has kind of gone as, as we expected. So the Saints go back to work. 2.35 remaining in our first quarter. Be sure to join us next Sunday on TNT as we travel to the Valley of the Sun for the Dallas Cowboys and the Phoenix Cardinals game. Earlier today, the Cowboys lost to the Eagles and the Cardinals dropped from the unbeaten ranks, losing for the first time this year. Cardinals' first home game. Cowboys need a win to keep up in the NFC East Division race next Sunday on TNT. Hayward's a lone running back. And he gets the ball. Saving stop, a 40-yard run, but it's a holding call against the Saints. But nonetheless, here is a man, Craig Hayward, Ironhead, weighs about 280 pounds. And if you don't get any penetration and you give him a little momentum, I'll give him a chance. Good block there by Kennard. Holding. Once he gets some momentum, it's going to be awfully tough to pull him down. I mean, he really is a remarkable athlete once he gets uh, in the open field because he's just going to give you a shoulder and keep you away from his leg. Hobie Brenner, the man caught holding. So a couple of penalties have really hurt New Orleans here, haven't they? Yeah, they always do. You know, the, the interception they would have had, and uh, particularly when you're expecting it to be a close ball game as, as these have uh, over the years, certainly the last three. back in the game with Hilliard and Fennerty splits wide right. Hilliard's a long setback. First and 20. Screen pack. Hilliard. He's got a little run. And he gets close to the 30-yard line before he's knocked down. Pat Carroll again on the stop. 
terrific screen block by Jim Dombrowski, the left guard, number 72. I mean, you talk about blotting out the light on Roman Pfeiffer, number 58, for the Rams. Number 72 did a great job of getting out in front. You can see the way he's just burying Roman Pfeiffer, and that allowed Dalton Harriet plenty of time to get around that block. He picked up 12, and it's second and seven, and Martin again splits wide left with Quinn early to the right. Two times in there. Hilliard, the center pass. Hilliard, the ball. He lost the football. Big scramble. He may have gotten it back. Let's see. Again, New Orleans very fortunate. They've cropped it up two or three times tonight, but they always get it back. Well, I think it's also indicative of the style of defense the Rams are playing some. You know, and it's an aggressive kind of defense, uh, stunning, blitzing. And Jeff Fish was saying, hey, we may blitz, you know, uh, 30, 40 times tonight. That was Michael Stewart, the strong safety, who got his helmet in there and caused the fumble. Yeah, then he gets the hand in there. That, that's something you can teach, and Jeff Fisher is doing it with his defense. Bennett, Dave Malone, setback now. Shotgun formation, Hebert, third and 12. He has time broken up, incomplete. It was intended for Eric Martin. Michael Stewart on the coverage. <laughs> Two great plays in succession by Michael Stewart. First, he causes a fumble on the play before, up close to the line of scrimmage, and now he plays a deep coverage. If you can have a strong safety that plays well close to the line and in deep center field, you've got a pretty good strong safety. Tommy Barnhart out of North Carolina will kick it away. Daryl Henley is the return man. Bobby Morris in on the stop. We talked earlier about this rivalry has produced some great games here lately. Well, you know, yeah, over the years, the last last year, 1990, the two games decided in the last, or the last three games decided in the last play of the game. Gordon Anderson kicked a field goal to win 2017 there. And, and again, I, you talk to both coaches, Jim Moore and John Robinson, both said yesterday that this is going to be a fourth quarter type of game. Robert Delfino, the long setback. Jim Price in motion. Everett in the pocket. He throws short, complete. A minimal game. Damone Johnson once again made the catch. Vaughn Johnson on the hit. You know, it, it's kind of interesting watching Jimmy Everett throw the ball to Damone Johnson, who's not really necessarily known as their receiver. But you, you wonder what they're setting up. If they're going to force you to take Damone Johnson away, you wonder when he's going to get the ball to Flipper Anderson or maybe Henry Eller. That's the end of the first quarter. Everett, three of five, just 16 yards. We'll be back right after this. All New Orleans to this point, a couple of penalties that went against them or it might have even been worse. <laughs> I wonder what he can tell us about photosynthesis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Second down, five yards to go as the second quarter gets underway. The Rams have the football. Buford McGee in motion. Alpino at the middle. Breaks clear for a moment then gets buried after he gets the first down. In on the stop. Gene Atkins was one of them, and Vaughn Johnson the other. The thing about Robert Del Pino, and John Robinson was saying it last night, he never gets his hips sideways. He's a guy that always has his hips going forward toward the line of scrimmage, so that even if you hit him, he's going to pick up three or four more extra yards. But Del Pino is a guy that you can count on. He can play special teams. He'll catch the ball for you. He'll block, and he'll make runs like that. That's the longest run the Saints have allowed all year, 11 Everett to throw has time and gets it away. Another one of those short ones. And he just got it away in time. Then got buried. It's Damone Johnson again. Okay. Sam Mills tackled it. The thing about Pat Swilling, number 56, he has three different pass rushes. 
That's one of them. That's the spin move. And you see what he did there. See, he, he at the setup. We talked about the way he complements his pass rush. First, he'll go quick to the outside and set the tackle up, and then he'll spin in. And then his third one is kind of a power move. Most pass rushers have maybe one, maybe two moves, but Swilling has three. The Rams have reached New Orleans territory for the first time tonight. Second man through, Del Pino kicks outside, gets inside the 40, down to the 38. Sam Mills among those on the stop. John Robinson's always judged running back about guys who can get three yards out of two or six out of four. And he thinks he has that with Robert Del Pino. Once again, a first down there at the 38-yard line. First offense at all tonight, mustered by Los Angeles. And again, you saw Robinson looking up at the, at the uh, replay vision here, the diamond vision. Of the, again, phenomenon going on throughout the entire league. Players, coaches, not waiting until Monday to watch the film. Henry Ellard has been quiet tonight, and he's wide to the right. He's the only man. Look wide. Now McGee goes in motion. Del Pino tries to cut back, gets close to the 35, but can get no further than that. There's Pat Swilling again on the stop for New Orleans. Yeah, you're right. You know, few good pass rushers play disciplined defense, but Pat Swilling is one of those guys. He was saying yesterday, hey, I don't just get geared up on third and eight. I'm there on first and ten and second and three, as well as third and eight. Now an official's timeout has been called for the moment. Tom Dooley wants to catch something on the sidelines. Here it comes with 12.26 left in the half. You know, the other thing Swilling was talking about was, you know, he sees so many different types of blocking schemes. We talked about the Rams coming at him with maybe three different schemes of blocking. But he gets used to it. You know, he's always going to see a big body of him. His first couple of years in the league, people tried to block him with back. New Orleans defensive phones are out. They have elected to keep their phones on. Each team can keep their phones on. Well, phones are clearly up for the for New Orleans, and they could ask, actually, uh, the, the rules, the Rams, if they elected not to use this, the Rams not to use theirs as well. Now John Robinson is... pacified, but, well, by whatever he heard. You know, it's... Uh, one of the things the, Ram the uh, Saints have done, Steve Sidwell, the defensive coordinator, is they've adjusted well. You know, the phone's out. You wonder about some of their adjustments because they do like to play a lot of nickel defense. Anderson wide to the left. Howard wide right. Everett. Swilling was one of them, but not all by himself. Sam Mills was there. Yeah, that's the old jailbreak. Two of the linebackers, Sam Mills, Pat Swilling, I think maybe Wayne Martin was well. Number 56 on the outside. This gets a quick rush. That's the, the speed rush outside. They should play without their headphones all year if it's going to be like that. <laughs> Third and 15 now for Los Angeles. Aaron Cox has entered the game, an additional wide receiver for the Rams. So real tough to get into any sort of rhythm against this New Orleans defense. He's hit as he throws it. Diving try. Ellard made the catch. What a play inside the 20. You, I don't know how Ebert got rid of it. 25-yard pickup, and I don't know how Ellard caught, a, caught it. A courageous throw by Ebert under duress by, again, I think it was Swilling and some inside people. Ricky Jackson getting held there badly, quite honestly. Didn't call it. The ball gets, he couldn't follow through. But when the ball's in the air, few guys can go after it like Henry, Henry Ellard. That they showed the, the replay, and they feel he bobbled the ball. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's the, uh, they're showing these things in Diamond Vision. They'll review that one. Yeah, that's, that's a drop, not even close. Let's see if they can get a play away. They'll replay this, and they'll have to send it back. Stadium. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you're right. Everybody's watching it. The officials have room set on the field. It is being reviewed by instant replay. There will not be a charge timeout. 
There's no way they can no. call that a completion, is there? No, absolutely not. They're just that, That's an easy one to overrule. There's a terrific job of going after it. It bounces off a shoulder pad. Yeah, not even close. That's, that's as clear as it gets, Skip. If they don't overrule this, the thing should be immediately done away with. <laughs> I mean, because if that can't be overruled, then nothing ever will be. That's about as clear cut as you can get. Uh, again, I, it, this is hard to figure why this one's taking so long. Many of the fans are chanting what I guess in Creole is incomplete. <laughs> But it sounds like a two word. After further review, we have a reversal. There you go. We have an incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down on the 43 yard line. All right, Tom Dooley. Yeah, the NFL can relax now. We're going to allow them to keep the replay another week. <laughs> yeah. Way to go, Skip. They're on double probation. <laughs> Dale Hatcher will kick at Vince Buck, the deep man. Dale you know, Hatcher's been kicking in this in this dome since he was in seventh grade. He said he came here in a punt pass and kick contest. Yeah, Atlanta Falcons. High boot, good kick. Buck calls a fair catch and makes it at the 12 yard line, and that's where the Saints will set up shop. 7-0 as our score, 10-44 remaining in the first half. Back to the Superdome after this. 7-0 Saints, our score, 10-44 remaining in the first half. And the Saints have their worst field position of the night as they start at the 13-yard line. Pat Hayden, Skip Terry with you from the Superdome. Hayward and Hilliard in the back field. Play out there. And right now, it's time to take a look at tonight's U.S. Marine Corps scoreboard. That was a good ball game. Got to yeah. see that today. The Vikings playing well. Yeah, really we'll have them later on. Absolutely opens up the uh, the NFC West clearly. That was a terrific game. Bears and Giants. Boy, Bridge blocks one. Redskins looking tough, and the Cardinals, after a great start, sputtered in yeah. Washington. How about the Eagles? That's a big surprise. 11 sacks. Jerome Brown just bombed them. The Battle of the Bays. Hilliard and Hayward. Hilliard, not much there, and down he goes. Tried to slam to the outside, couldn't get it done. Falcons, Kevin Green among those on the stop. The Falcons win it on the road. First time in a long time. Yeah, done that. 18. Good ball game there. A lot of people thought the Jets had a chance to upsetting the Bills, nearly did. Boy, you wonder about Coach Myers. Yeah. Broncos with 16 points there for the win. A lot of close games this week. How about those Lions? I wouldn't have thought. Yeah. After watching them opening up, <laughs> well, 16 have... would be maybe the best pick. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't have that very Sanders that easy, but it really struck me about today's game a lot. I think six very close football games. Third and seven, Joe Fennerty in the game. Hey, Bear. Turner, the intended receiver, Sammy Lilly on the coverage. Hey, the Rams came after Bobby A. Bear with everybody. Really, you see a nickel blitz. You see two uh, two defensive backs blitzing him. Hung in there pretty good under duress, which he did. The receiver actually had Sammy Lilly beaten by a baby a step, but a pinch too far. Barnhart will kick it to Daryl Henley. Barnhart stands at his one. You say, Abel, you only get so many shots like that against a blitz, and you have to take advantage of it. Line drive kick again should get a return. Henley at the 35. 40. And out of bounds at the 45 yard line. Among those chasing him out, Buford Jarman. 
49 yard kick, 10 yard. Return. The Tomahawks. Hey, they clip on tight, looks good. Oh, thank yeah, you very good. much. <laughs> thank you very much. You're really a warm and wonderful human being. You like those Braves. The Tomahawk, big win today, right over the Dodgers? Yes, sir. Mm. You're a Dodger. Yeah, I knew But they get another whack at us out there. And those will be on our sister station, TBS. Here well, we go. And here's what has to happen, I think, for the Los Angeles Rams. Damone Johnson has caught all the Ram completions. They have, Everett has to get the ball to Flipper Anderson, Aaron Cox, and Everett. Darryl Pino spins and away and gets close to five. He made a fine effort. Mills on the stop. He almost was nailed at the line of scrimmage. He's turned into, well, he was a pretty good player, then sort of faded away, didn't he? Now he's come back. Yeah, Del Pino is a guy who four years ago was just made the team as a special teams player and then came on as a pass receiver. And now he wants to be a runner like this and a pass receiver. Again, you see the hips always moving forward, always turning, the legs always moving. So Del Pino is going to get you a lot of yards after initial contact. Eight carries, 38 yards for Del Pino. Second to five for the Rams from midfield. Del Pino again. He's close to a first down, though he appeared to be a little short. Vaughn Johnson, one of those good linebackers, and on the stop. Yeah, I think it was uh, Joe Malinichek, the right guard, number 71 for the Rams, who put the block, I think, on Vaughn Johnson there that gave the little crease to Del Pino to pick up the five yards. Malinichik is a, is a guy called over the Rams Park about 7 o'clock last week one night, and he was still there watching film. A very focused lineman. Third and one is the situation. 7.40 left in the first half. He dives over the top. I don't know that he got enough. It's going to be very, very close. I, I think they gave him the mark. Remember last third and one, the Rams threw the ball without any success. This time it's Del Pino over the top. They want to take a look. This is going to be close. surge by this defensive line. Number 94, Jim Wilkes at nose tackle really got it all started. He and Wayne Martin, Frank Warren inside did a great job in the defensive line. You can tell that both coaches feel this is a game of field position. There's Hudson Houck, the offensive line coach for the Rams, I think who did a sensational job trying to transform this offensive line from the young of uh, the old players, the veteran players, to a whole new offensive line. Answer kicks it toward Buck. Boy, he kicked it a mile high. Fair catch called for. And accepted it around the 12 or 13 yard line. So 6.53 remaining. 33 yard kick, but a good one nonetheless. 7 0 Saints is. Hey, Lily, the best special team player for the, uh, for the Rams, the guy who downed two punts against the Giants last week inside the five. He hurt his foot on their very first punt, stubbed his toe on the turf. And if he can't go full speed, that is significant for the Rams in this kind of game. Martin and Early wide right for the Saints. Greg Hewitt, the lone running back. And he pops out of there again. Crosses the 25 to the 28. Pat Carroll finally rode him down. If you don't stop Craig Hayward early in a run, he's going to gain a lot of yards for you. He's a complete momentum guy. Terrific block on the right side by Derek Kennard, number 60. The right guard did a great job. It allowed that little crease for Hayward to find. And even though he's 280 pounds and a big man, he still found the crease. And then again, he keeps people away from his, his legs, his lower body, always dipping that shoulder. First and 10 for the same. 614 left in our first half. The defensive end, who they got plan B from Miami. A good block on the right side on Carl Wilson by Stan Brock, the right tackle, number 67, who 
He did a nice job of pulling out there and just blocking Wilson, allowed Hayward to get that a little bit momentum again. And Brock uh, Gip wanted to wish his mother well. She's recovering from a very serious surgery out in Oregon and wanted to wish her well. And We join him in that absolutely. sentiment. Second down, six yards to go. Hebert will put it up. And he completes it for Shia the first time. John Tice made the reception. Michael Stewart on the cover. Yeah, Michael Stewart, number 23, the strong safety for the Rams, has played very well in this half. There he is looking at the replay, see if he's in the right zone. But we see him play close to the line of scrimmage, cause a fumble. We've seen him deep downfield to break up a play in center field, and there he covers the tight end. And then you, you ask all those things of a strong safety, and he's doing it. Frank Wainwright checks in a tight end just activated by the Saints when Greg Scales had to have his knee scoped. Third down, a yard to go. Looks like they might have run too early, but I don't see any flag. And I don't know that Hilliard got the first down either. He did not. The timing on that play was not good. Well, you know, short yardage defense is nothing but a battle for territory. Nothing but a battle for territory. It's a penetration. You see two or three guys, Carl Wilson, 95 Peel from the backside, 55 Sanders. Now Barnhart kicks it to Henley. He got that one. Henley will field at the 17. He stumbles, loses his footing as he crosses the 20 and down at the 23. 46 yard punt, seven yard return. We have 343 remaining in our first half. Saints lead 7 0 in New Orleans. Good evening. What happened to, we talk about special teams being key. This Vince Buck, number 26 for the Saints, gets <laughs> he gets mugged over there by Anthony Newman, number 26. But that's what this game is about. Yeah, that's that's terrific. <laughs> yeah, got mugged three times. The Heimlich maneuver put on there by Anthony Newman. Rams for the second time start from inside their 10-yard line. 343 left in our half. New Orleans took the opening kickoff and marched right down the field, but since then it's been a defensive struggle. Yeah, it, it, and it hasn't, I don't think, necessarily been bad offense. I, I conversely yeah, I asked I, you that before. Is, yeah. is that the case or is it just excellent defense? Yeah, you know, I'll answer it the same way. I know you're getting short of memory. Yeah, it, very good. Well, but the people <laughs> didn't get to hear you. Very good defense. Dissertation. No, no I, I think it's very good defense, quite honestly, and not poor offense. That's but not it, what you said the last time. But it's certainly the kind of game we expected. Field position and defense. Buford McGee in motion for the Rams. Pino not much. Ten yard line, no more than that. The safety, Brett Maxey, in on the play at the 10. You watch the Rams, you talk to John Robinson, what he wants is balance. He wants this team to be the, like the Washington Redskins, where in a situation like this, Robinson hopes that he can grind out maybe a first down or two and then give Jim Everett a chance to go up top. Well, what he said yesterday was, I don't want Jim Everett to feel like he has to win the game every week. Hellert is wide left, Anderson wide right. They've been like the Maytag repairman tonight. Everett is going to run out of that. Slides down with a first down, close to the 20-yard line. Ricky Jackson was covering him, but he picked up 10 and got the first down and keeps the clock running and gets the Rams out of the shadow of their own goalpost. That's a nice little scramble by Jim Everett. He's never been known for his foot, uh, foot speed, and uh, he got rid of the anvil on that one and picked up a nice little uh, first down. Not many people have been known for his foot speed. <laughs> no, all the technicalities he catch me on. <laughs> 23 remaining in the first half. Delfino stacked up right at the 20 yard line. Jim Wilkes among those in on the stop.
Is it Ward? Murphy, Captain. Where's Murphy? This is the final boarding call for Delta. Second and ten. Everett, four of seven, 20 yards, all to a tight end, Damone Johnson. Has to get the ball outside. Aaron Cox in the game, goes in motion. Delfino hit behind the line, breaks one tackle, gets maybe two yards, no more than that. Gene Atkins out of Florida A&M, the safety up to make the stop. Remember 1989 when Flipper Anderson caught 15 passes against this New Orleans team for 336 yards, set a NFL record. Well, they haven't even thrown the ball tonight to Flipper, but the Saints have done a very good job of taking him away, bumping him at the line, and somebody's behind him. Third down, eight yards to go. You see the time remaining. He'll throw for it. He's in trouble. Down he goes. Robert Goff was among those in on the play. A reserve nose tackle out of Auburn. And a big play. Number 91 right in the middle of your screen. He's playing nose tackle. Does Puts a nice little move on Tom Newberry at the stunt. The guard on the right guard, Milicek, takes his man. Newberry ends up chasing Goff, and he gets there for good defensive line stunt by the Saints. And they'll have plenty of time with three timeouts to get something else on the board before halftime. And we'll keep it right here. Timeout is called by New Orleans. They're first. They know they'll have good field position. Coming up on the Fruit of the Loom halftime report, stay tuned for Fred Hickman and company. They'll have scores, highlights from today's week three of the NFL and some stimulating conversation as well and on the fruit of the loom halftime report. So the Rams will kick it away and the Saints would love a field goal in this spot wouldn't it? Yeah when they've got Morton Anderson perhaps certainly one of the best field goal kickers and in this place almost uh, virtually does not miss inside 40 yards. They didn't get it. And it's Morris who makes the catch and is drilled. Bobby Morris, the four-year man out of Michigan State. Boy, so that's where the Saints will shut up. Set up. Easy for me to yeah, say. Set right. up. Talked about this being a special teams game. Sammy Lilly, number 27, who was limping around the sidelines a moment ago. Important for this punt coverage team for the Rams. He kind of gets pushed out of the way. Bobby Abear brings his men to work with a minute six remaining in the first half. And Lily gets some help there from one of the linebacker Sanders. There's 33-year-old Jeff Fisher, whose parents went to school in high school with uh, Jim Mora. Jim was saying yesterday. Turn early is wide to the right. See how Abear plays it here. The shot done. He'll put it up, and it's complete at the 50. Turner breaks one tackle, and down he goes at about the 47. That's Lloyd Turner out of Northwest Louisiana. Jim Mora said yesterday, around the 35-yard line, I feel very comfortable getting the ball to Morton Anderson for a field goal. So that's the case. They need uh, 13 yards. They take a little time getting this play away, and now whistles. Paltz play with 45 seconds left. So two timeouts remaining. Plenty of time to get, get certainly give Morton Anderson a chance. But they're getting close to that 35-yard line. Quinn Early made the reception out of Iowa, a fifth-year man. Boy, that is a well-thrown ball under some duress because Bobby Abear is going to take a shot. If you're going to play quarterback in the NFL, you have to take pops like this and then be able to come back and still get yourself in position. And then throws like this. That was a perfect throw because Jerry Gray had it pretty well covered. Those are the kind of plays you really like. Everybody did their job. Hebert took the pressure. Somebody delivered a great hit. He threw the ball. The receiver had to make a great catch because there was great or good defensive coverage by Gray. Those are professionals at their work. That's exactly right. And you, sometimes you, you know you take it for granted. You, you get blasé about it. You do about a completed pass and you don't realize how difficult it is under duress like that to be able to throw a ball in between bodies coming at you. A big rush. There's the man with the 
the new $5,000 shoe. There's the left shoe. It's obviously so he doesn't get it mistaken for somebody else's shoe. He's put his name on the back of it, as you can see. But yeah, $5,000. Somebody else's $5,000. Yeah. In the research and development of this shoe. Early in motion. It's complete. Eric Martin with the reception, but the play had been halted. But there, uh, Stan Brock, the right tackle, may have been moving just a pinch early. False start, 67 on the offense. There is That's no play. Was. It's a five-yard penalty. There is no play. Well, Stan Brock in his 12th year here for New Orleans, number 67, right there in the well, kind of middle of your screen. Worried about Kevin Green. Carl Wilson checks back in. Robert Young goes out for the Rams. Brock, the father of four daughters here, saying, hey, I've, I've been through some bad times with these Saints, and I'm really relishing this 2-0 start. Never started 2-0 in their 25 years. First and 15 now. Hebert <laughs> feels pressure, gets it away, has an end, but he caught it out of bounds. The play was made by Gerard Alphen out of Kansas State, but he caught that ball standing well out of bounds. Not much. Even the rabid Saint fans can't argue about that. <laughs> but, you know, you, you mentioned something very interesting and subtle, what Aber did there. He feels the pressure, didn't see it, just sensed it, feel, uh, felt it, stepped up into the pocket and allowed him to deliver the ball. Yes, it wasn't an in, uh, a, uh, incomplete pass, but he avoided the sack and, again, gives Anderson perhaps a chance. Imagine you can hear that pressure, can't you? Oh, yeah. You can't see it. Yelling and bumping. Again, they need about nine yards to give Anderson a chance. Second and 15. 25 seconds left. <laughs> Little Doug Woolley almost threw an interception there. He threw it to the wrong man. Or he misread the move of his intended receiver and we now have a third and 15 with 20 seconds remaining. Yeah, awfully, awfully good coverage by Anthony Newman, number 26 for the Rams in the nickel situation. Here's the guy, Anthony Newman, last week who did a terrific job of shutting down Dave Meggett of the Giants. And tonight his role in the nickel situation is take the back out of the backfield, did his job there. Quinn Early wide to the right on third and 15. The Saints have one timeout remaining. Leslie O'Neill in San Diego did Gerald Robinson number 97. He has been close a couple of times. Coming from the backside to Bobby Abair. He has been close two or three times. That time he just got there because it was the first three steps. He's got a tremendous burst those first three and that got him to Abair. And the half comes to a close on a 12 yard sack. So the teams go to the dressing rooms here in New Orleans with the Saints on top. By a score of 7-0, the Fruit of the Loom halftime report coming along next right here on TNT. Then we'll be back. Kevin Butler is like that for the, uh, for the Bears. Morton Anderson provides the same kind of thing. Ten game-winning kicks Morton Anderson has had in his career with the Saints. And if you play good defense and you have a guy like him, you're going to win a lot of games. He approaches the football and it's a rip, and it's another boomer. It's in the end zone, and they'll down it right there. Well, you know, Skip, the, the uh, Saints really have had a tale of two halves. You see what's happened in the, in the first half of game. Second half, they have not played well offensively. Or defensively, for, for that matter. But uh, really, their offense sets the tone in the sense of trying to grind out the clock some. Talking yep. to some New Orleans people. Go ahead, Pat. I was just going to say that if you, as you look at Jimmy Everett here, now coming into tonight's game, Delpino, Anderson, and Ellard had 21 catches coming into the game. Tonight, they have zero. Zot, nada. Zill. Good thank you. Everett fades the throw. In and out of the hands of Buford McGee. Could have caught that one, but he could not.
You know, the Rams were saying that once Jim Everett starts getting in rhythm and start play, playing as well as he's capable of playing, they're going to be a very good offensive team. But you see what happened in the first half. Four of only seven, just the 20 yards, has not been able to get the ball to the wide receivers. And it's not so much Jim Everett. I think you have to give the credit to the New Orleans Saints defense. They have done a sensational job. Second down, 10 yards to go. Jim Price in motion, Del Pino gets the carry, and that's all he gets. Swilling was there, Sam Mills was there to stack him up. And Sam Mills said yesterday, if we can stop Del Pino, if we stop Del Pino, then we can turn Swilling and Jackson loose in the pass rush. We said that's the key to this game on defense, and that's exactly what Sam Mills did there. Oh, he is some player. Third down, 10 yards to go. 7 0 New Orleans. But for the USFL, Sam Mills may well have been teaching. But here, once again, is the pressure by Swilling. Again, timed it beautifully. He gets there a little bit late. And here's the end of the play. But watch Reggie Jones. See, as soon as Reggie Jones turns his head to the pass, and there's contact, that is not pass interference. If he doesn't turn his head, it is. Vince Buck will try to run this one back, and they figure to have good field position. High kick, not particularly long, and Buck takes it and pays the price. At the 40-yard line, Sammy Lilly again put the leather to him right there. Well, you know, if your offense is not getting it done, sometimes special teams can come up with a play like this. And Sammy Lilly did it in Philadelphia. He came to the Rams on Plan B, and he's done it the first three weeks for Gil Haskell's special teams. Boy, look at Buck. He came so close to losing that football. Oh, man. That, that'll close your eyes. From the 40. They were nothing there. Down he goes in the grasp of Mike Peel, the five-year man from Illinois. Yeah, that, that was the first time that they stopped Hayward before he got that momentum going, and Peel was the guy who did it. And 81 yards in that first drive. Uh, a lot of punting, Tommy. Barnhart, the punter, will definitely win his letter tonight. Eric Martin is wide right, and so is Quinn Early. So both wide receivers split to the right side of the field. Early in motion. Second and nine. Complete. Martin breaks one tackle and gets close to the first down. No, he never got there. Pat Farrell finally finished him off. Well, Kind of reminded me of the start of the play Anthony Carter had today for the Vikings. Remember, I don't know if you saw that highlight that Anthony Carter, Carter yeah. had a sensational play. Same kind of thing. Martin sees an inside blitz. Smart player. Just heads it up. Avoids going down with a knee. And if but for Pat Terrell, perhaps he's gone. And if Terrell a eases up as he might have, thinking he was down, you got trouble. Third and two, 1240 left third quarter. Michael Stewart with a good coverage, and once again the Rams are able to hold. Well, I tell you, the one thing the New Orleans Saints offensive line has done is done a great job of handling Kevin Green, number 91. That time it's Havernick, number 74, who's getting the hands out and doing a terrific job of keeping Green away from A Bear. But the rest of the Ram defense took that play action pass away and had it covered beautifully. Jerry Gray joins Daryl Henley. They have two deep men to try to run back this kick. Barnhart, he says, he tries to put these kick returners in a box. He wants to kick it in between the 8 and the 10-yard line, he was saying yesterday. High kick. Fair catch by Henley at the 14-yard line. So that's where the Rams will 
try to get on track. 38-yard kick. More importantly, no return. Have a total of 63 yards. Jim Moore's defense has played very well. Del Pino has 46 of those 63 yards. McGee and Del Pino in the backfield. From the 14, the Rams go to work. Jamon Johnson in motion. Del Pino pops out across the 20 to the 21. A gain of about seven. Gene Atkins on the stop. The safety comes up to make the hit. Well, generally, any time a running back has that kind of run right up the middle, your center is doing a pretty good job. Tom Newberry made all pro, number 66 for the Rams, made all pro at right guard the last couple of years. They switched him to center, held out of camp, then left camp when his uh, wife had twins, and has been an adjustment period there, but certainly a good block there for Del Pino. Second and three for the Rams. back to the line of scrimmage. Vaughn Johnson made the stop. But again, it, it tells you tells you two things. How one, how well I think the uh, the defense of New Orleans is playing. Number two, it also hints that somehow or some way, if the Rams are going to win this football game, they're going to have to get the ball to some very talented wide receivers: Ellard, Anderson, and Aaron Cox. Third and three. They're 0 for 6 on third down conversion. They're 0 for 7. It was intended for McGee. Great pressure on Everett once again. Yeah, it was by Sam Mills who put the pressure on Jim Everett. Sam Mills was saying yesterday, we want to put pressure on Jim Everett up the middle. That's where we've had some success. Inside linebacker blitz, nobody came close. A well-thrown ball, actually, by Everett that probably should have been caught. This is the seventh Ram punt. The Saints have no return yard. Buck is the deep man. Again, the Saints are going to have good field position. And it's down very close to midfield. There's Mosey Tatupu who made the uh, hit there. Now a little extracurricular activities across the field. Put that helmet back on. Pat Look Carter. Again. Now everybody has calmed down, and again, New Orleans will have terrific field position. The question is, will they be able to take advantage of it? Turf burn, eh? Yeah. yeah. The cows can't eat. They shouldn't play on it, as far as I'm concerned. Rich, and it, Richie Allen, I think, said that first. And he's right. In the right elbow of Jim Elbert last night, he had you, all the scabs. He had five or six scabs from playing in uh, the Meadowlands last week. Well, he's going to have some nice hickeys there on the left elbow after this game. Eric Martin, wide right. Great field position again for New Orleans. They lead 7-0. Hey, hey, Hilliard in motion. Hayward. Gets stood up behind the line, breaks one tackle. But then he runs into Larry Kelm, the middle linebacker out of Texas A&M. Chris Pike was the guy who slowed him first. <laughs> he plays with a smile on his face, doesn't he? You know, you sometimes you forget that guys are having fun playing professional football. But number 93, Chris Pike, who just came, a nice hold job there on Chris Pike. Pike just came to the... Uh, to the Rams this week because of the injury to Allen Wright, all six, eight, three hundred and some odd pounds of them. Second down, nine yards to go. And there has time. This will be a touchdown. Great. with the timely interception and it was all over. 59 yard return. You know the two corners for the Rams play it differently. That was Jeff Fisher the defensive coordinator giving it a high five to Jerry Gray. Jerry Gray is a playoff the receiver kind of guy and drive on the ball. The other one Daryl Henley is in your face but beautifully timed by Jerry Gray. Tony Zandejas will try to tie the game. Mike Tabor will hold it. Thing. If you just joined us, we're all tied 7-7. That's the third career TD for Jerry Gray. 
We've seen wonderful defensive plays all night, and this is just another one. That ball is not terribly thrown, quite honestly, and Jerry Gray just, first of all, laid back, read the pattern, and then just drove on it. And then he had, had the hands to catch it. Skip, how many times do you see a defensive back, back get there to make a play, and he doesn't actually catch the ball? See the way he's reading the quarterback? He got turned, but had enough catch-up speed to make the interception. Eric Martin was convinced he had that ball yeah. for a first down and a big game, but he was wrong. Well, we have seen a, I don't know, a season full maybe of, of, of good defensive play tonight for these two teams. It's over time, 7 7. Jeff Fisher, the defensive coordinator, was saying that he's very, very happy with these defensive backs in particular. That is Pat Terrell next to Jerry Gray. He's the free safety. There's Jeff Fisher. He said, hey, we needed a change of pace around here. These guys are stimulated again on defense. Stay tuned to TNZ later in tonight's ball game. Pat and I will select the McDonald's McLean Deluxe Player of the Game. The deep men, Bobby Morris and Quinn Early. And again, th this is, we, we said this is going to turn on some special teams plays. Skip, I think this is one of them. How well the Rams cover, or conversely, how well the, the uh, Saints can bring it back. Then Dejas nails it. Quinn Curley at the three. And he's down at the 12 yard line, and he's got it buried. David Lang. Ordinarily a running back playing on special teams made the stop. Bad field position now for New Orleans. Moments ago, they were right at midfield. Yeah, and again, a, a, a big special teams play by Gil Haskell's Ram special teams. They they did a wonderful job there in coverage. Absolutely no way. Now, I think this is the toughest situation for a quarterback. After you've thrown a, an interception for a touchdown, the crowd has turned on you. They're very sensitive about Bobby Hebert leaving or not playing last year, saying he didn't want to be here. This is where somebody else has to come up with a play for him. The long setback. He puts it on. John Tice, the nine-year man out of Maryland. That's a big play for New Orleans, a 22-yard pickup. They give Bobby Bear some credit. As we just said, he throws the interception. The crowd has turned on him. He comes right back and drills the ball down. He is well covered. There are two bodies around John Tice. Tice found a way to catch that ball in traffic, which good tight ends have to do, and Bear laid it right in between two players. Eric Martin is wide to the left. UCLA made the stop. Offensive line and defensive line have been locking horns all evening, and there have been some battles. Well, I'd say Dombrowski, the left guard, did a great job. I think it was on Peel that time. Just buried him. And to give a, a guy like Hilliard a, just a little bit of a crease, he's going to do something. He has a game there, but a lot of tackles behind the line of scrimmage for Hilliard tonight because of some penetrating defense. Gil Fennerty enters the game as a running back. Hilliard is out. And Fennerty gets the ball on his first down and a lot more. To the 41-yard line, Jerry Gray on the step. But the ball is down before he stripped it. And the Saints are on the march. The touchdown sort of stunned them. 17-yard game. Skip, watch the block of the left guard, number 72, Jim Dombrowski. Two plays in a row. He has just buried his guy. He's kicking out in Fairness, the outside linebacker. Hayward comes in, picks up a nice block, and there's just a gaping hole there for Fennerty. Two good blocks. First down, they mark the ball at the 40-yard line. at their own 13. Better than motion. Taylor. Look at him move the pile. A gain of about four. 
It, it was great seeing Haywood come up smiling a moment ago, playing with that smile on the face, you know. It gives you that look that he doesn't quite believe the light goes out when the refrigerator door closes. You know? <laughs> but once he gets a moving, look out. I don't know. You better, you better hire your, fire your writer. <laughs> Second and six. I love to see guys having fun playing them. I do too. got the sack, but he got rid of it, but Bear just gets drilled after he throws this ball, but it's okay. You don't mind getting taking a shot when your tight end can make a play like this. As twice they've tried to throw the ball to tight downfield, or three times actually, twice he's caught it, the other time he was open. From the 18-yard line, first down. And throwing the ball to Brenner is going to set up all his wide receivers. Hey, the long setback. Craig Hayward. All three are 280 pounds of them. Denard, number 60, pushes the guy off, picks up Kelm, the middle linebacker. Dombrowski does another good job. And again, just his momentum is going to give you six or eight yards, but this has been a marvelous drive led by Bobby Hebert. You think he's not mentally tough responding from that interception he threw for a touchdown. Unfortunately, like on Doug Leverage, 
on number 77 defense. The point is good. We will penalize on the kickoff. Oh, cool. Just what the Rams needed. Yeah. 14-7. Carl Wilson, the guilty party, and we'll be back right after this. Here was the touchdown play. John Tice, the tight end, number 82 in motion. Now, you think with, with Ironhead Haywood, 280 pounds, you need a big hole. You don't. Just give him a sliver. He'll crawl his way in. Jim Moore, obviously, delighted with the way Bear answers the interception. And John Robinson is just dis disappointed. 50-yard line, either an onside kick or kick it high. Don't kick it in the end zone. Oh, oh he kicked it out of the end zone into the stand. So why do that? Force a fair catch inside the 10-yard line. Instead, they'll start at the 20. The folks here like what they see. The Money Changers. That's tomorrow night at 8 on TNT. Sounds like things around your house. Huh? <laughs> yes, exactly. Now the noise gets yeah. to be a big factor, doesn't it? It certainly is. And I still don't understand why Morton Anderson kicked that ball into the end zone. But nonetheless, six times tonight, the Rams have started a drive on the 20 or inside the 20. Jim Everett just 4 out of 10 for 20 yards. He's 0 for his last four. L.A. 70 yards. Total offense. And it was Pat Twilling on the speed rush. Remember earlier we saw him on the spin? You talk about combination pass rushes. He's got three of them. Number 56, the bottom of the screen. This time, earlier, remember the spin move? This time he set, he set him up only with a spin move. Comes right around him on the speed rush and knocks the ball away from ever. Second down, 10 yards to go. Only 15 on to get a play away for Los Angeles. Yeah. Now the officials have got a home flex. Did they call that incomplete? I think they did. Oh, yeah, that, that's incorrect. That's and we're going to have a review, Ooh. and that's why it's Forward pass stuff. incomplete on the field. Okay, yeah. It's being reviewed by instant replay. Yeah, I thought Swilling got there and got to the ball before Everett's arm was going forward. Nonetheless, it was a remarkable play by Swilling. Yeah, I, I think he got it right when it's the back way in the back. He had it back. Boy, that's a tough call. Had he just started it forward? Well, you know, that that's... The, and, and because the call on the field was an incomplete pass, it has to really clearly show, demonstrably, uh, that, it, that it was it was a fumble. So, if that's the case, the ruling should stand. And it would be second and ten from the 20. The Saints had... Well, they're still reviewing it. The Saints have not have not scored any third quarter points until that touchdown they just scored. Here's another look, Pat. Again, is Yorm going forward? I don't think so. No, it's still coming up. But who, who recovered it here? That's that's the key thing. Yeah, the Saints recovered it. Boy, this could be a huge... Oh, so out. Wait a minute. Yeah, it looks like Del Pino made the recovery. I was going to say, what a huge reversal that would mm. be. The wave has come to us here in New Orleans. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, you know, I, originally I thought New Orleans had recovered the fumble, but it won't be that big even if it's ruled a fumble because it looked like at the end Del Pino, in fact, did recover the ball. Well, your two minutes are up. Either put another dime in or <laughs> let's go. I like it. After further review, it's a reversal. It's a fumble. Ball belongs to Los Angeles on the 12-yard line. Second down. Good call. Good call by Tom Doolin. So it's a loss of about eight yards. Here's the first thing. I don't know how. Whoever that was missed that recovery, but he did. But heads up play by Del Pino. And he's got it. So it's second, and we'll call it 17. Henry Ellard wide left. Draw play. Del Pino gets outside. He loses the tackle. And gets a 
good deal of it back before Vaughn Johnson knocks him down. An 11 yard pickup. You know, the same play that Delfino ran for, what, a 38 or 39 yards against the Giants last week to get him down to the one yard line. A good call here in a situation when you're facing a zone team, and as soon as you get through the first wave of players, nice block by uh, Flipper Anderson, number 83, allowed uh, Delpino to pick up three more. This is a huge down for the Rams. Down 14 to 7, and the crowd is really into it. Somehow or ever, Everett has got to get the ball outside. He goes for all of it for Anderson. <laughs> Reggie Jones on the coverage. Reggie Jones, the rookie, twice tonight has responded. See how he's headed in? He, he sees Everett. He knows it's going to be a deep throw. Now, it looks like he's double covered, but uh, Flipper Anderson has such a burst that if you throw it out there far enough, he'll go get it. The ball was underthrown. But the deep man. Dale Hatcher will kick it away again. 2.19 left in our third quarter. A short kick. Again, great field position. Only a 29-yard punt. Let's take a look at tonight's Silver Bullet scoreboard. The Vikings winners over the 49ers. That was a great game. We only saw part of it, but the parts we saw are terrific. Tough day for the Cardinals. I still like the Redskins in the NFC East. That's a surprise. Not the, that they won, but they yeah. won rather handily. You're right. You're right. The Pack finally wins. Mikowski throws his first touchdown of the year. Falcons get there first. Meanwhile, back here, the ball's on the 47-yard line. Edward and Fennerday, the running back. Neither Billiard's got hurt. Play action. Has a man. Complete. First down, 33-yard line. John Feist, the tight end with a reception. 20-yard pickup, and the Saints look great. As soon as you start running the ball, decently as the Saints have here in this third quarter. Boy, that sets up other opportunities like play action. And it makes it very tough on outside linebackers who generally should jam tight ends because they're trying to make a tackle. You don't jam the tight end. He gets upfield awfully quickly and makes a play like that. First and the 33. the third year man. Pat Terrell again on the stop. Boy, between Craig Hayward and Gil Fennerty, I bet you they have 50 yards tonight after being hit. Fennerty has 27 yards and just three carries. You know, and, and for the New Orleans Saints, Mike Peel of the Rams is injured, I guess, but the New Orleans Saints, what, as good as their defense is playing, Abear just can't turn the ball over here, can't get sacked, but if you could, because if you put three more on the board here, the way their defense is playing, they should win this ball game. Saturday again, he bounces outside. Cuts in, first down, more. Inside the 20. Chris Pike on the stop. Well, there's some rumblings around New Orleans this week about Bobby Humphrey. Jim Fink, the uh, general manager, has, has said in the paper this morning, was quoted as saying that they have actually talked with Denver about those prospects, but I don't, I don't know. Gil Fennerty and Craig Hayward have looked awfully good tonight. That was, in all likelihood, and in fact is, the last play of the third quarter, so the Saints are not out of the bar woods, but they're in pretty good shape. At the end of three, they lead 14-7. And they're driving toward what appears to be yet another score. Back to see if they get it after this. The ball once more inside the 20-yard line at the 19. Pat Hayden, Skip Carey with you from the Superdome, where a big crowd of 69,000 or so are going wacko here. Mike Peel hurt for Los Angeles and out of their defense. Craig Hayward, the sole running back, his first down. Yeah, I, 
think you're going to see a lot of two tight ends and a lot of Craig Hayward from here on in because Jim Mora knows that if he just gets three more on the board the way his defense is playing they should win this football game. Plus you run them down a little bit. The Rams have been out oh, there a while. Man. But just looking at the end of the third quarter stats believe it or not the Rams have zero yards passing if you look at Mike Peel and that's that they include the sacks of course in that. Second and six is the situation. about the Rams good manners prohibit me from asking if, if that's not an NFL record who holds it <laughs> as a former quarterback I thought you might know well, no it was, it was not I if that's what you, that's what you insinuate well, I, I wouldn't came, insinuate that's I came I close I know you just accused me of it. I've, I've come close several times I know but I think actually the Rams defense in 1979 held Seattle to a minus I don't know 50 or 60 yards in passing that game. That's Gil Fennerty checks back in to join Hayward. If the Rams are going to win this game, their defense has to prevent a first down here. Third and two. Fennerty. Close. When they unpile, we'll see. So if Jim Moore is short, he's got to kick this one. They're going to measure for it, I would guess. With 13.09 left in our game. You know, I just remember the record was in 1967, minus 53 yards passing, Denver and Oakland. You just, just remember. I just, just remember. He's a road scholar, folks, and every now and then he shows you why. A lot of streets. Of <laughs> Not often. <laughs> He's short by. Kick it. Not very much. Kick it. The fans want him to go, but the fans... The defense is playing too good. The fans don't have a contract. <laughs> but it looks like that's what he's going to do. He brings in Chris Port, a big guard out of Duke, a 290-pounder. Richard Cooper, number 71, is an eligible receiver. He reports to the referee. Go for the knockout blow. They're one out of one on fourth down tries tonight. It's less than a yard, about a foot, if that. It's all a matter of penetration. Let's see where they mark it. It looks like they're going to give him the first down. A lot, of, a lot of Rams upset with the mark, believe me. by Kelman Sanders, the two inside linebackers. Just needed a few inches. And that's oh, yeah, he got it. Keeps the clock running and the drive alive. Floyd Turner splits wide right. Bennett and Hayward in the backfield. Kevin Green and Larry Kelm applied the hit on it. Boy, the Saints have had some very long drives this half. And football is a game of adjustments. And Jim Mora's staff deserves a lot of credit because at halftime, they made some adjustments to run the ball here in the second half. And what they basically have done is decided to go two tight ends, run the ball inside, give it to Craig Hayward, and run primarily over Jim Dombrowski, the left guard. And that clock continues to tick. Eleven and a half minutes left. Hayward, the long sucker. To about the one-yard line. A host of Rams, Kelm and Pike and Pfeiffer all on the tackle. You know, it's interesting watching the kind of night that Craig Hayward is having, Skip, because 
over the last couple of years, he's been the doghouse of Jim Moore for his weight. And finally this year, Jim Moore didn't say anything to him. Just laid off about a weight, said, hey, this guy's a big man, he's going to stay a big man, and I'm not going to hassle him about it. And you're seeing the results tonight. Remember, he had one very long run called back early in the game. Yeah, 40 yarder. He's 13 out of 55. Was 13 for 55 with a touchdown. Was that 37 yards? What else? <laughs> what you said? <laughs> Third down. From the line. was one very impressive drive and you saw almost everything penalty that time the lead blocker for Haywood but they've had put together three sensational long drives tonight penalty a good block as well here's the fast point by Martin Anderson Twenty-one seven is our score lead block number 22 Gil Fennerty Haywood does the rest. These folks are fired up. Listen to it. David Lang, Vernon Turner are the deep men. Morton Anderson will kick it. So far, the Rams have had no answers. They down it again, and they start at the 20. Well, Skip, there may well be a changing of the guard in the NFC West. I know it's only uh, three weeks into this season, but we've seen the 49ers, who usually have run away with it by week five at one and two. Clearly, the Rams uh, are struggling. The Falcons as well, but what we've seen thus far in three weeks, they certainly have enough defense, does New Orleans, and with Bobby Abair back, they're much better at quarterback. Well, the Rams got it. I mean, it doesn't take a road scholar to figure out the Rams got to get it going now. Well, single coverage right down here in the bottom with one of the wide receivers. You got to get him the ball. That's right. Everett dumps it off short and threw it behind Willie Anderson. Well, that was, that was the matchup. Willie Anderson and Vaughn Johnson, the linebacker. Boy, that's 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 the kind of matchup you dream for. Don't and game plan for. Don't receivers, wide receivers, good wide receivers, who for whatever reason can't get the ball, get frustrated about this time in a game? Well, yeah, but you know, as quarterbacks, you're used to that because you've never met a wide receiver who isn't open every play. Yeah, that's and so they're always coming back and saying that. But you know, he, he was open that time, but he hasn't been open a lot. 11 total yards for the Rams this half. Les Miller in on the stop by reserve defensive end out of Fort Hayes State. Well, Skip, with the Rams down by 14 points, 10 minutes remaining in this game, the Rams will have at most three series to get this thing done. Now, two of those, they're going to have to score touchdowns. And this, at third and eight, becomes critical. As critical a third and eight as you can have in the first three weeks of the season. They come out, trips right. Incomplete. And Pat, Pat Twilling, Twilling. Yeah, was hanging all over the back of Jim Everett. What a night Pat Twilling has had. On the run, in pass coverage, and rushing the passer. Well, again, just, you know, the ball was trapped. The speed rush once again by Pat Twilling. Remember the spin move early? The speed rush twice has gotten Gerald Perry. Buck will try to return Hampshire's punt. Fine kick. Buck will field at the 32. He gets the block. 41, 42-yard line, and he is drilled, and flags fly late. 
Glennell Sanders has had a good game for the Rams, made the hit 46 yard punt, 10 yard return. With Vincy Glenn and Sam Lilly, who had that big collision, both got up after, shook each other's hands, and walked off the respective benches. I say, there's, a, there's some respect with these guys. The penalty, apparently. Well, let's see. And these guys, there's Lilly going after it with 29, Vincy Glenn, but after the play. They got an illegal block no in the back. Feeling. Number 37 on the receiving team. They're going to pop up. During the run, there will be first down, timeout. Yeah, you love to see that. Isn't that great? Be more be nice if there was more of that in all sports. The penalty goes against New Orleans, an illegal block, but they've got the ball and still pretty good field position. Field position this half. New Orleans, their own 36. Los Angeles, their own 19. Well, again, I think this game is gone just as we said at the top. Defense, field position, special teams. That has been that has been the story. Hayward is the lone setback, and he probably figures he's going to be a busy guy here for a while. And now, Hebert surprisingly calls timeout. The first charge team timeout, 40 seconds. Well, the out. Saints, who have never started 2 0, they got to the first 2 0 start this season, have a chance, obviously, of, uh, as it looks now, to go 3 0. And you see what's happened 13 teams started 3 0, six of them made the Super Bowl, 12 made the playoffs. It was the 89 Bears. I know you were going to say that if I didn't. 89 Bears went 4-0 yes. and yes, okay. didn't make it. Can't fool you, Skip. No. Oh, yes, you can. Yep. John Robinson trying to get his troops going, but I don't know who is going. It's with the officials. Yeah, I think, he, I think John Robinson said it's supposed to be at the 27-yard line. They'll lose that argument. Early in motion. Hayward. Trips up, but he keeps his feet. First down. Roman Pfeiffer the stop, but he is a big man. 13 yards. Yeah. But uh, he, he's got, you know, he's got legs the size of Vermont. And, and you, you see the way, for a big guy, he can really move those puppies. And he's so tough to bring down low. And he's got some ability to be able to carve and slice in between tacklers there and pick up another four or five yards. 15 carries, 69 yards, and two touchdowns. From the 45. Spenerty back in the game gets the call and is upended but hangs on to the football. Michael Stewart submarined him. Now Michael Stewart is doing his best to try to cause a turnover because that's the only way these Rams are going to win this football game is their defense making a play. Now, in spite of their aggressive style under Jeff Fisher, they've only created or caused four turnovers thus far in three games, one of those coming tonight by Jerry Gray. Buford Jordan checks into the game at running back for the Saints out of McNeese State. Just signed on to this team. Eric Martin came within an eyelash of a big gainer. Daryl Henley on the coverage. And Bobby Abear is thinking with this kind of lead, though, what I don't want to do is take a sack or throw the interception. But because of the man for man, he thinks he has an opportunity to get up top to Eric Martin. So Eric Martin makes a lot of catches in crowds. Doesn't have a lot of speed, so there's going to be generally just bodies around him. He doesn't get open by a lot but he can catch a ball in a crowd. He's one of the really underrated receivers in this league. Third down, nine yards to go, 744 remaining in regulation. Out of the shotgun. Hebert has it deflected at the line of scrimmage. Fennerty wound up making a good block on the referee, which is unfortunate. It was an accident. 
And the Saints really didn't milk the clock very much except for the big burst by Hayward. Well, you know, again, if your offense can't do it, maybe you try to block a punt. I mean, have your special team try to do something. Make something happen because your offense has been shut down all night. 7.40 remaining. Daryl Henley, the deep man for the Rams. They need a big play of some kind to get going here. Here they come, but he got it away. Oh, what, Whoa, a kick. what a kick. Henley hopes it'll go into the end zone, but that's not going to work for him either. Jeez. Down at about the seven-yard line, Benny Thompson got there first. John Tice finished it up. But Tommy Bonhart was telling us yesterday he can place it inside the 8 and 10 yard line by placing the nose up because when the ball hits it's going to come right back and stay inside the 10. The receiver in the box this is Daryl Henley who is always told do never fair catch the ball inside the 10. But when you get that nose up it's going to take a bounce like this and they down it on the seven yard line. That's the fourth time Tommy Barnhart has put the ball inside the 20. That, that is sensational funny behind a good defense. The Rams got to do it in a hurry. Everett to throw a lame duck. Boy, that thing really wobbled out there. It was intended for Ellard, incomplete, and Everett is now for four for 14 on the night. For 20 yards, he has missed his last eight. He has not completed a pass since early in the second quarter. That, that, that one was just a bad throw. That one was a bad throw. Other times he's 0 for 7. This half. Other times he's been under, under some duress, but he had a guy wide open there. And the coaching staff, the Rams, were saying this week that they're waiting for Jimmy Everett to get back in rhythm. So far tonight has not been the night. Jim Price is wide to the right. Delpino tripped up just past the line of scrimmage. Wayne Martin made the play, and a good one it was. This, these defensive linemen, Wayne Martin, Jim Wilkes, Frank Warren, don't get the credit they deserve because of the outside linebackers like Ricky Jackson and Swilling and such. But Wayne Martin did a great job there of stopping a play. It was definitely a pass down for the Rams. It should have been a big play, but Wayne Martin gets his call on it. Third and nine. Ricky Jackson. In his 33rd year, 11th year in the season, 33 years, years old, Skipper. 11 season Ricky Jackson can still make plays like this. That's the power rush, the bull rush, right over Duval Love to Jimmy Evans. Six and a half minutes left. Hatcher will kick it away yet again to Vince Buck. Bad kick. We'll get a bounce. Buck picks it up. To the 40 yard line in Los Angeles territory. Now it's time for tonight's GMC truck leaderboard. And there it is. This is not going to, it doesn't appear, end in the last few seconds as these games did. Yeah, this is, uh, this is as good a, a victory for New Orleans they've had over the Rams in a long time. Generally, as we said, the last three times they've played, it's come down to the last play. But I want to tell you, the defense has been spectacular. A Bear and the offensive line have done it when they've had to. And Craig Hayward has had a heck of a night. Hayward and Trinity in that backfield for the Saints. is a third down receiver of most of his career. Eight carries, 52 yards. And again, the, 
the key here, Skip, though, is the, the line blocking, particularly on the left side. Dombrowski, number 72, the, the pulling guard there, Kennard, number 60, Hayward. We talked about him being a very good blocker on linebackers. He gets a big block on Fennerty. I mean, the Saints really have played on a short field all night. Fennerty takes a knee, ooh, right in the kidney. First and ten. Win early in motion. Hayward. Boom, they got to the big guy that time. Robert Young out of Mississippi State. A fifth round draft choice, rookie, along with Glenn L. Sanders on the snap. But you the know, clock continues to roll. There are a lot of teams that are winning football games this year, running the football and playing like the Saints are. The, the Saints, as we said, are, are really just the Bears in Florida leaves. All they, they want to do is they play field position, they play running game, they play great defense, and, and that's what it's been. They have really started the ball near midfield this entire second half. Yeah, the Bears and what? Fleur de Lise. You know the, the little thing on their helmet? The flower? Oh. Thank you. It'll be third and about six. Robert Young again involved on the stop, and the clock continues to work for the Saints. We're down to four. Well, you see the time remaining in regulation time, and the Rams' offense has done absolutely nothing all night long. Yeah, they really have. It really has it. And as we talked, it's been a combination of, of what New Orleans has done on defense. Jim Everett clearly has not played well when he's had had the time to throw it, which hasn't been often. So the total yards tells you the story. Timeout is called here by the Rams with 4.02 remaining. It's third and seven. The ball is at the 25-yard line. Next week, we'll be in Phoenix where the Dallas Cowboys will play, and we'll have it for you at 8 o'clock Eastern time. The stadium show, Silver Bullet Stadium show, will commence at 7.30 Eastern time, and those will be Two teams in bad news. The Cardinals and Cowboys both shut out today. Yeah, nonetheless, the Cardinals are still one of the Cinderella stories. Uh, won the first two games, get blown out by a very good Redskins team, a team that it should win the uh, the NFC East. But Joe Bugle's got his uh, team, team certainly playing a lot better than they did a year ago. And Troy Aikman, well, if he can get over the 11 sacks from today, uh, hope he can just show up after the beating he took today. And Pat, coming up next, when my night's work is done, you'll be involved in the stadium show post-game report, along with Fred Hickman, Kevin Kiley, and company. Live interviews with the Rams and the Saints. An update from Week Three of the NFL, and our Craig Sager caught up with Bo Jackson this week, and we'll visit with him about returning to football. So stay tuned for the stadium show post-game after the contest. New Orleans starting field position this half on their own 46. That makes life a luxury. Third and seven. A bad throw. Gerald Alfin was the intended receiver, but he couldn't hang on. Here comes Morton Anderson to try to kick the final nails into the coffin. Well, with a $5,000 shoe, he ought to get a few more attempts, don't you think? Yeah, how much did the shoe cost him? <laughs> I did think... it cost him the five? No, no, he, he's, he's got part of the deal. And I was asking, I said, why don't you ever kick, have you ever tried kicking with bare feet? And he said, are you kidding? That's still out. Couldn't get a shoe contract. Good point. <laughs> he tries a 42-yard field goal. It's long enough. It is perfect. Was that a bad snap or yeah. a fumble snap? Bad snap. Very good hold by Tommy Barnhart, the punter. Watch Barnhart. See the mark? Anderson, very particular about where you put it down. Low snap. Get to there to get the turn. That's a sensational hold by Tommy Barnhart. And, and appreciated by Anderson. Isn't uh, Morton Anderson the guy that has a uh, pub around here where he promised to black out the game tonight? Didn't I read that somewhere? <laughs> yes, yes you did. Yes, as a matter of fact, yeah. And you have to be happy for that man, Bobby A. Bear, who yesterday was beat, was concerned about getting booed by the fans. Nothing to boo about tonight. They did turn quickly on him when he threw the interception, but showed a lot of courage and a lot of savvy bringing his team back for a long drive for a touchdown afterwards. 24-7 is now the score, and only 3.53 remains in this game. Everett loosening up on the sidelines, playing catch with Mike Pagel, the other... Ram quarterback. 
Uh, you know, uh, you know we should point out again that this statement has been made very often by people who know a lot more than I do. The quarterback is never as instrumental positively as it looks and never as instrumental negatively as it looks, but Everett has had a tough night. Yeah, and they, they have to find a way to get those wide receivers the ball, whether it's uh, on a reverse or a short pass, let them go with it. Yeah, I saw the Vikings use uh, Anthony Carter in a couple reverses today as a way of getting the guy a ball, but when Flipper Anderson and Henry Ellard are as good as they are and can break a game open like they have, as they have here in the past, you have to give them a few more chances. Well, Anderson will let her rip there. David Lang, Vernon Turner, the defense. Turner's going to bring it out, trying to break a big play here. He's not going to do that. Ten-yard line. What special teams play, and what a kick. Benny Thompson, again, he's made several tackles on special teams. Yeah, he has been great, Benny Thompson has. So Jim Everett comes out. He's 4 of 14. We don't mean to belabor it, but it's a heck of a story. He's 4 of 14 for 20 yards. 0 for his last eight. Four sacks. There's the heart of the receiving core of the Rams. Del Pino, Ellard, and Anderson. You see what they've done the, they, they have done the first two weeks? Zippo tonight. That, that's great defense. That's a great defensive game plan as well. Gets it away, has a man complete at the 30 yard line. Henry Ellard has himself a reception. 19 yard pickup. But the Rams have two timeouts left, and they have to score three touchdowns to win the game in 320. All alone, Aaron Cox with a reception. Cox inside is hammered down at the 38 yard line, and Pretty obvious it's prevent defense time because they're moving the ball yeah. 32 yards. And why New Orleans is going into a prevent as well as they play all night long in their regular defense, it just, I don't know, it just drives you crazy to they, they go into this. Ricky Jackson again. At the very beginning of the show, we said the four linebackers for the Saints are the best as a combination in football because the outside guys, Ricky Jackson and Pat Swilling, can give you a headache all after, after, after all night or all afternoon. The inside guys, Sam Mills and Vaughn Johnson, are very difficult to run against. And when you get inside pressure like they did there, you chase them right into Ricky Jackson. And they've all been pro bowlers at least twice, so we're not making this up. Everett the throw has time this time gets it away intercepted that'll do it Nancy Glenn running with the football across the 25 yard line and the lights are out in La La Land Jim Everett's doing is trying to make something happen. His down, his team is down 24 to seven. You know, it's an easy interception for Vincey Glenn. All Everett's trying to do is throw it up, give his wide receiver a chance to make a play. But again, just well covered by this defensive secondary of New Orleans. Hayward and Kennedy are the setbacks. And this will doubtless be the last play prior to the two-minute period. Don't forget the stadium show comes along after the game. Bill Jackson will be among those featured as Kennedy gets a yard or two and then is thrown back. Chris Pike made the stop. The Rams defense hasn't played that no. poorly. It's been just yep. the Saints defense has been spectacular. They've won this game. Nothing yep. against their offense, which has been good enough, but their defense has been magnificent. Well, Minnesota comes in here next week to play on these Saints. That'll be a great yeah, game. Yeah, that is going to be an interesting contest. Okay, we've reached the two-minute period. We'll be back right after this. It's Craig Hayward, 17 carries, 72 yards, and two touchdowns. And there are a lot of guys you could have picked, and he's certainly a deserving candidate. Also, we'd like to thank Rusty Kazmierski and Neil Gulkus of the Saints Media Relations and John Oswald of the Rams organization 
for their invaluable assistance in helping us get through this contest tonight. Two minutes left. Penalty one more time. And he pops it again. He may go. Well, he can make some people miss, can he, Penalty? Todd Light, the number one draft choice out of Notre Dame, a touchdown saving tackle, 21 more, one easy skip, 21 <laughs> more yards for Fennerty, 10 rushes, 74 yards. He could have been the player again. Yeah, now if my math is correct, yeah, there it is, 7.4 average. He, uh, but he, he makes the first guy miss, and then he's outrun a couple of guys after that. You know, we talk about special teams. New Orleans has kicked off five times. Four of them have been touchbacks. New Orleans has punt hunted five times and the Rams have only returned those for 15 yards so special teams for New Orleans deserve a lot of credit. This is a team game and it's been a team win for the Saints tonight. Saturday again finds more running room and another five yards or so. Michael Stewart made the stop but the clock continues to tick a minute left. The Rams go up to Candlestick next week to take on the San Francisco 49ers who are coming off a tough loss today. John Robinson's teams have played very well up at Candlestick. But he said yesterday this is the team, his team, the Rams, that are going to be a lot better at the end of the year. He certainly hopes that's going to happen the way they play tonight. But he said we've got a lot of young players who are not playing particularly well now, but he expects them to be a pretty good football team by the end of the year. Meanwhile, the Saints are 3-0. And, oh. and that will do it, I would think. The final seconds tick away. And the Saints, for the first time in their history, are 3 and oh. Tom Benson does his thing. He is the owner of the Saints. Everybody's got to be someplace. <laughs> We'll be back with totals and highlights right after this. This year. Okay, head on out, my friend, and get down to the stadium show, and we'll see you next week in Phoenix. Come on down, I'd interview you down there. Uh, what's the gift? <laughs> Once again, the final score the Saints 24, the Rams 7. Join us next Phoenix for the Dallas Cowboys Phoenix Cardinals game. Both teams lost earlier today. The Cowboys to the Eagles and the Cardinals to the Redskins. So our game means a lot in the NFC East Division race to keep pace with first place Washington. Stay tuned next for the stadium post game show. Fred Hickman and company bring you the latest highlights and information from today's action. For Pat Hayden, I'm Skip Carey. From all of us at TNZ, thanks for being with us. So long, everybody. temperature never drops below Xerox. That's very important to remember, especially at a time like this, when it's very deserted and very cold. Ah, you did remember Xerox antifreeze. The temperature never drops below Xerox. Tonight, on the Adventure Channel, join explorer Marceau Soulemer as he unlocks the mystery of the Great Barrier Reef. Submerge with him into an amazing world. You Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going and going. Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. 
TNT wants to know when you gaze up at the stars, do you wonder what's coming down to get you? It's a special Friday Night Monster Vision, September 27th on TNT. And welcome back to the post-game edition of the Stadium Show. I'm Fred Hickman, along with Kevin Kiley, and Pat Hayden's going to be joining us here in a few moments. The final score here from Superdome, the New Orleans, a dominating performance as the only Los Angeles touchdown tonight was scored on a defensive manner. Now, joining us now is one of the architects of this entire uh, operation here. Jim, thanks. Thank you very much for coming out. My pleasure to be here. You have to be very proud of the organization being off to a 3-0 start. First yeah. time in... Yeah, in we're very proud. We're very proud. First, I'd like to congratulate the Rams. I thought... With a couple of exceptions, they were in the ball game all the way. It's the most physical I've seen the Rams play in a long time. Let me ask you quickly about the question that's been on everybody's mind, the rumors about Bobby Humphrey. How is Dalton Hilliard? Are you happy enough with your running game that you will or will not go after Bobby Humphrey? Well, we haven't made a decision yet on that on uh, Humphrey, but we're concerned about Dalton because, as you know, he didn't play the second half, and uh, it's sort of a week-by-week -week thing. We're one of, I guess, several clubs that are talking to the uh, – the Broncos about yeah. Humphrey, but nothing is going to happen today or tomorrow, I don't believe. Okay. Mr. Fakes, we spoke with uh, Jerry Albano in Bessemer, Alabama. He's Bobby's uh, agent this week. He said that Bobby has been to Denver, has cleaned out his personal belongings from Denver, indicating that he probably will not be back to Denver. What are the particulars and the possibility of the trade for Bobby Humphrey? Is there a price that you will pay to get him here in uh, New Orleans? Well, first of all, we have to establish whether we want him or not, and that hasn't been established yet. We're concerned about Dalton. He did play a little tonight, but they had to use him uh, sparingly the second half. Infinity, as you can see, is a good football player. We're not 100% uh, certain that we're going to bring in another back in. We have talked to Denver about Humphrey, as other clubs have, but I think it's gotten a little bit out of proportion right now. A, a trade is not close by any uh, stretch of the imagination. Well, is it a factor? Is it a concern that Bobby Humphrey may go to another team before you can make a deal no, with him? No, no, that's not a concern at all. If they, I told Denver the other day if they can make a deal. They've been talking to the 49ers. I suggested they try to get uh, one of those good defensive linemen from, from the 49ers. <laughs> well, Jim, you and Jim Moore have been working on this. Before we let you go, let me ask you one more question. Do you guys feel as though this 3-0 start and everything, uh, all considered, that you're ready to really contend this year? Yes, I think we felt that way even before the season started. Uh, things have begun to fall into place. Bobby's back. Frank Warren's back. Uh, uh, Dalton, it looked like he was going to be back, but right. we're not too sure. But a lot of our young kids are coming along, so we feel pretty good about this football club. Well, Jim, thank you very thank much you for coming out. We'll you. let you get thank back you. to your thank ball you. club now. Thank you, Jim. And uh, speaking of getting back, we're going to get back to Atlanta. It's been a full day of action in the NFL. Ernie Johnson and Kenny the Snake Stabler are standing by to bring us up to date and up to speed on what happened this Sunday. Thank you very much, Fred Hickman. Seven games today, folks, decided... ...against Machine as Wendy's Diet Coke...